in Iraq, they have officially banned the term homosexuality. So you can't even say you gay no more. You can't even, you can't even say you are. That is crazy to me. I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. I don't like men no more. It's probably guys, boy, but you're now back with another video, man. In today's video, got another episode of the Big Bad Podcast, man. And today we got a whole lot to go over, and I gotta go to work in like an hour, so I'm gonna try to cover these topics real quick. Try to get into detail on a few of them, and not so many on the other ones. I'm gonna get into detail on the ones that you guys sent me. So last week. I think somewhere in the video, I must have asked people to send me some videos because you guys would send me about five or six videos to, to look through. Um, the ones I'm going to go through today came from uh, T-Rex Rally 101. And I think you sent the Joseph Santiago video. And then this this other one from I Am Amy 8057. You sent me a suggestion and a video. The video you sent me was about failed recruiting that just came out two days ago. And the suggestion was that while I play the video, I react to it in real time. So I didn't watch this video, so I don't know what's in the video. I didn't watch the, the Joseph Santiago video either, so I don't know what's in, in the, this uh, Song First Class Joseph Santiago video. So just to kind of go over with you guys, man, uh, our supporter base has went crazy this week i don't know what you guys are doing out in the world or telling people about the channel or what i don't usually look at the uh, subscribers until the day i shoot the video but today i i looked at it when i was gonna shoot this video and i saw that our subscribers are at 4287 people man uh, go ahead and give you guys a hand for that i appreciate that all right i don't know the support for this channel is overwhelming man uh and I, I can't even, I, I almost cried when I saw that number. I was like, man, wow. I can't believe people are really starting to latch on and watch the channel for more than just the old videos I used to do, the Warren Officer videos. They kind of, they like the podcast, apparently, because people watch it. So, I'm going to, this time I'm going to do it a little different than I did it the last couple times. I'm going to play the video while I watch the video. So, I got them all uploaded on my laptop. So, if you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking down at. Um. Uh, Still ain't got a co-host. It is what it is, but I'm going to get one, man, one of these days, hopefully. Or maybe not, man. Maybe I'll just be a solo, solo, solo pod, man. It is what it is. First video is coming from I am Amy 8057 and it is U.S. Army fails to meet annual recruiting target again. Video came out, I think, a week ago. And I'm going to play that right now. And... The U.S. always prided itself as having the world's most formidable military machine, a standing force of nearly half a million, many stationed on bases in far-flung parts of the globe. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do you solemnly swear. But now recruitment is at its lowest level the since the draft army was reserve. abolished 50 years ago, and well, hardest yeah. hit is the army. If we don't turn our recruiting situation around, yeah, like years, I can't guarantee you that the Army won't have to make some more substantial potential for structure reductions. Uh, because we, we've got to make sure that our units, for example, that are on the immediate response force are manned adequately so that they're ready to go. The secretary herself she appears right. in commercials aimed at increasing recruitment, but she they appear right. to have little impact in a market that's been fragmented by increasing political divide and by partisan anger that threatens to politicize the military itself. Of the United States. Many Republicans accuse the military of, in their phrase, being woke. I'm going to pause it right there. I, you know what? I think that's bullshit. I don't think it's because of politics that people don't join the military. I think it's incentives. I think there are just virtually thousands of other ways that people can earn money. I think it's no patriotism. I also think that a lot of the reason why we had as many people as we had in the Army during the, that from that 2002 to about 2012 time frame is because when 9-11 happened, a lot of people found a sense of patriotism. A lot of lives were lost when that happened. So I, I don't think, um, uh, honestly, I understand where they're coming from. 
But I also, I got to say that I, I just don't think that that's the main reason is politics and that all of this quote unquote woke and people use that word wrong all the time. That's, that's not being political on the left side. Don't mean you woke. That's, that's not what that means. It's, people took that word and they used it all weird kind of ways wrong and, and turn it into something that it ain't, but whatever. But yeah, I don't think that's why the recruitment target is, is not, we're not meeting the recruiting target. I think it's incentives. I think, the military as a whole has to incentivize the shit they do just because and figure out how you're going to get the young people to 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 join and give them some reason a, a sense of passion to want to serve their country and i no disrespect to you uh, uh secretary the honorable secretary of defense uh christine warmoff but i i don't know if they could relate to you i don't i honestly i don't I don't know your military background, but I saw your Wikipedia page and it ain't, it didn't say nothing about any military background. So maybe you know some people, I don't, I don't know. I, no disrespect, but I think y'all gotta, they gotta figure out a way to appeal to that group. And because of the internet, the blinders are off. Like everybody can see everything. So, you know, like if you saying if if you say something, you gotta back that shit up because there's you can't hide it no more like you used to when I was coming up in 2004 when I came in. We didn't really have the internet to tell us that stuff is BS. Like you had to go from what people were saying and you had to believe it. But now you got all these outlets to where you can find out if it's BS or not. So I think you just gotta get real people. I ain't saying be unprofessional. But you got to learn your audience and you got to talk to your audience how they they know to be talked to. So that's what I'm going to say about that. Pointing to and the I hope I edit this of right, man, named after I hate editing reaction Civil videos, War leaders. It, it's hard and in particular, do. the recent Pentagon decision to pay for enlisted personnel to travel out of those states that have banned abortion. Some Democrats in turn point to the proportionately large number of veterans and even serving personnel who took part in all right i'm gonna pause it again right there so there we go with that woke word again that's not what that shit means i ain't gonna sit on here and explain to y'all about how woke, what woke means that that's not it don't mean changing history and all of that other bullshit not to mention some of these name changes i don't want to get all political and get into these name changes but some of these name changes were warranted like if you go back in some of these people's history, they did some really vile shit. Like a couple of these these are generals. Um, I think one of them. I, I got to do the research again because I didn't go into. It. I don't have the, the notes in front of me. But a couple of these generals actually owned slaves during the during before the the Civil War and after, yeah, and after everything came apart or whatever, right? I, I honestly I didn't particularly give a shit about the name changes. Uh, it didn't mean a whole lot to me where I work, uh, who it was named after. There's a bunch of bullshit in America that's named after a bunch of horrible people. So that didn't change the fact. I, I think I was more upset at people who tried to justify why the name shouldn't be changed and based it on some type of woke movement or based it on uh, not erasing history. When you go, you can go to a school and and te teachers can't even teach slavery no more because they don't want the, the, to make it seem like the shit existed. And and I, I hate to sound like the race guy, but slavery was a thing. Like the shit happened. It still affects things today because of systematic racism. You can't you can't get away from it. So it's one of those things that I. I I, yeah, I don't like when people try to make it make it seem like that. Also, the abortion thing. Y'all can hate me all you want. I, I'm not against I'm not against kids being born. Um, um, I'm about people making choices for themselves. I don't think the government should tell you how to make a choice with your body, especially a woman's body, especially men. Telling a woman how to make a choice with their body, especially when a lot of times these same people will will get on TV and say they they are against abortions and then if one of them knock knock some their young secretary up they run across state lines to go get an abortion shit is crazy to me I don't understand how I don't understand how they able to do that and look themselves in the face and get on TV in front like because of political ties that they don't they're against abortion you're not you're not cuz when your mistress got knocked up you ran across down to Missouri or wherever to go get an abortion. It happens all the time, man. So yeah, I'm a, 
I hope we get through this video, man. It's almost 10 minutes in and I'm just on one video. The attack on the Capitol in January 2021. I so I think the biggest challenge See, Trump had a lot of influence of, on, uh, on a lot of people. extremism in the military isn't necessarily the numbers um, because the numbers are small, but it's that it goes counter to the oath of service. And so Americans see that as a real tension point when it comes to um, entrusting the military as an organization. Compounding the what recruitment problem. About? 25% of those who want to enlist do not meet the required physical or academic standards. That's another thing. The military Can't pass has the test. started what it Too calls damn big. a future soldier prep course to address Don't disrespect my big people. Elite units have been largely military. unaffected. There's long waiting lists of qualified personnel to join special operations units in every branch. But it's not the experts who keep the military machine running. It's the cooks, the drivers, the maintenance Facts. teams, Support. the ones who are seldom noticed unless they are not there. That's Mike true. Hanna, Al Jazeera, That's true, Washington. man. That's true. The people that... Listen, I see Jocko Milicic or whatever the fuck his name is get on TV all the time talking about how special forces and shooting Bin Laden and all of that. And shout out to them. They, they do their job and they do it good. They do a great job. I see them get on Joe Rogan and talk about special operations and shooting at people. But nobody don't talk about the support people that's out here dragging food from from Baghdad to 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 Mosul or Anaconda, getting blown up in trucks. Everybody want to talk about the cool shit, but sustainment support is what drives that stuff. Like soldiers gotta eat, so you, soldiers gotta have supplies. Soldiers gotta have bullets. The ammunition people take care of that. Soldiers gotta have transportation. The mobility people take care of that. So these are the people that's right now not joining the military at a high level. So I don't know what the hell the, the government is going to do to fix this, but this is not a, something secret that nobody knows. This shit is on the news app damn near every week about how we keep uh, missing um, uh, recruitment requirements and other countries going to start taking notice of that. So I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Christine, um, uh, the honorable Christine Warmoff, you might want to put somebody on a commercial like me. That's going to tell you what it is. Like, listen, I had some good days. And I had some bad days. I had some days when I didn't want to go to work. And I had some days where I love my job. It's just a regular job like any other job. I am support. I can speak for the people that, that have done support for the majority of their careers. And I can speak for that that non-special super soldier people. I'm regular. Like, I go to work. I get a job done. I come home, right? I go deploy. Get a job done. I come home. Like, I get it done, right? And, uh... That side of the military and the army specifically don't get hurt a lot. So what happens is they show these commercials to people who don't want to do none of that special shit. And they think that because when they come in, they're going to have to do all of that. Yeah, you got to protect your country. Your you got to do your, your fighting and your shooting. And you got to learn how to shoot and be in shape and all of that stuff. But it's a job like any other job. It doesn't pay particularly great. You're not going to make $100,000 your first year in. But you will have a substantial living. You're gonna have a decent, a decent living. You're gonna live somewhere okay, that's safe. You're gonna have, uh, uh, you know, your hours is not gonna suck. You get a lot of paid holidays that a lot of people don't get. So I can talk. Excuse me, I'm sorry, gas from this green tea. I can tell you a bunch of bad shit about the army, and I can tell you a whole lot of good stuff. So it's like one of those things. I don't know how they gotta fix these advertisements or who they gotta get to recruit people or what. But uh, the shit ain't working, apparently. Another thing they got to stop doing is making people be recruiters who really, really, really are bad at it. Like, you can kind of tell the type of people that uh, it's not going to be good at recruiting nobody. Because they, they barely want to do the shit they, they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I just went almost 15 minutes on one video. So I got to go ahead and go to the next video. That's this dog on pod going to be an hour long. And I know y'all want to hit me for no hour, man. Hey, let me know if y'all want the pod to be longer. I might try to break out some time and make it a little bit longer. All right. So this next topic was sent to me by, this looks like Derek Dunk. Derek Dunk. I think I spelled that right. D-O-U-N-K. D-O-U-N-K. I think if I butcher your name and I'm sorry, but Derek Dunk sent me this email about 
Uh, the murder trial for soldier and death of pregnant Spring Hill mom postponed. Um, I actually heard this story. It's about a song first class. His name is um, Joseph Santiago. I heard the story and he actually was convicted, but I'm gonna let y'all hear it right now. I'm gonna let y'all watch this one. And first, the trial for an army soldier from Tampa who's charged with murder has been postponed. He's accused of beating his pregnant wife to death. Ten Tampa Bay reporter. Yeah, this is a vow human being. For more than a year, and she explains why this court martial could now be delayed for months. They feared this before it happened. I'm just reaching out as a, a friend that I could see if I could help her get out of the situation and what how she would get out of it. In Crazy 2021, situation. Fort Campbell Army officials confirmed Megan Santiago died after an incident happened on base. Her husband, Tampa native Sergeant First Class Joseph Santiago, is charged with her murder and injuring an unborn child. She loved them so much. So she took her last breath. She loved those kids. She really did protect them with all she could. Megan was eight months pregnant at the time of her death. The baby survived. She also had two other children. She's definitely their guardian angel now. Who Megan gonna take care of them kids, She was man. in an abusive marriage and was planning to get out just before she was killed. They put the fear of God in you. Let her go, daddy. bro. Let her go. If you leave, I'll kill you or I'll kill your kids, or I'll kill your mom. It's just, it just spirals. They don't you don't care. have to now, kill her. 16 months later, the trial I don't Joseph understand. Santiago was unexpectedly postponed. The judge ruled certain evidence could not be used, and lawyers with the government are appealing the decision. All right, Liz, so how long could this appeal process take? Well, a military spokesperson told me it could take anywhere from two to six months, and that's with this case being a priority. Now, Joseph so I'm going to stop that video right there because the um, it pretty much is talking about the legalities of the case. I saw another video from a Mama Mar Margaret, M-A-M-A-M-A-R-G-O-T. It's a short. She she's a YouTuber. Um, she she has some decent videos about murder murder victims. A lot of them is military too, so she got a good page. But this gentleman was convicted. The story was uh, what the, allegedly is that he uh, his his wife was trying to leave him. He didn't want her to leave, so he beat her up. And then um, when she tried to actually leave, he ended up killing her. Now she was pregnant at the time. Uh, she, they took it to the hospital. They couldn't save her, but they ended up saving a baby. Why I think this is is uh is messed up. Number one, because it's domestic violence. You know, I don't advocate for domestic violence. And number two, it's because this happens so much in our military, and I I, I think it's abhorrent. It's one of those stories that you hear and you wish you didn't hear it, and you wish it didn't happen. But it happens so much because people don't know how to control their emotions and they try to blame that shit on PTSD. And yeah, I got a little bit of that shit too. But there are certain human aspects of life that if something may triggers in your mind that tells you not to kill your your, your your the mother of your unborn child because she's trying to leave you. Um, you know, I, I if something mentally going on with him, I hope he gets help. But I don't think that to be true. I think some of that rage just comes from uh, people thinking they want to have a control over a system that they don't have no control over. Everybody know like when you in a, when you in a relationship, you're in a marriage and stuff like that, and a person try to leave you. It's a lot of legalities that goes goes to that. So I I just hope that these I, I actually feel bad for the kids because who's gonna raise these kids because they got a dead mama and a daddy that's going to jail for probably a hundred years, right? I, I, yeah, it's just, it baffles me, but this was a good story, uh, and I, and I, I just want to bring light to that, that this, this gentleman was convicted, like I tell y'all all the time, crime don't pay, especially domestic violence and anything harming a child, so keep your hands off, people, respect your, respect the women and the kids in your life, man, so, let's get to this next video, y'all send me some pretty good stuff, man, this next one was kind of wild, though. This one, <laughs> listen, y'all got to see this shit to believe it. Here we go. The government of Iraq has banned the use of the term homosexuality and That's replaced crazy. it with sexual deviance. Iraq's official media regulator has ordered all media and social media companies operating in the country not to use the term homosexuality and instead call it sexual deviance. 
The Iraqi Communications and Media Commission said in a statement that the use of the term gender was also banned. It prohibited all phone and internet companies from using these terms on any of their mobile apps. And according to a government spokesperson, a penalty for violating the rule has not been set yet, but it could include a financial fine. Well, Iraq does not explicitly criminal, criminalize gay sex, but loosely defined morality clauses in its penal code have been used to target members of the LGBTQ community for a long time now. Yeah. Major Iraqi parties in the past few months have stepped up criticism of the LGBTQ rights with rainbow flags shit. frequently wow. being burnt in protest by Shiite Muslim factions wow. opposed to recent Quran burnings in Sweden and Denmark. The escalation in opposition underscores the broader societal challenges faced by the LGBTQ community. So I ain't gonna watch this whole video. This new director? Yeah, if y'all know this, man, these videos are like three minutes long. I don't like watching it. I guess this new society, we got a, we got a real short attention span because I just don't want to watch these long videos. This article is from News 9 Live, and it's a, I think it's a, a British um, a website. In, um, in Iraq, they have officially banned the term homosexuality so you can't even say you gay no more you can't even you can't even say you are that is crazy to me listen y'all be complaining about i i do this shit too so i i can't even say y'all i'm gonna say us i'm gonna say we be we complain about how shitty it is to live in america sometimes right and for a lot of groups and a lot of sections and a lot of people, it is pretty shitty, right? Women get the shorter in the stick. They're not getting paid the same equal pay as men. Black people get treated like shit. Uh, during 9-11, the, the, uh, anybody who was of Arab descent got treated poorly. I mean, things happen. Even that was a, that was a, a, a span of six months where you couldn't go nowhere as a straight white male without feeling like you you didn't belong in it, which is insane in America, right? But everybody goes through these discriminatory periods of time, especially uh, people of, people with lesser financial status. A lot of it's classism, to be honest. Uh, financial status and a lot of uh, 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 different racial statuses, they go through this stuff. But one thing I can say about the United States of America is that this type of stuff doesn't happen there. Um, when I was in Iraq, I remember that we were talking about people being stoned for being gay. I was having a conversation with one of my, uh, my, my friends that's Jamaican and you know, in Jamaica, if you're, if you're gay, they give the citizens the ability to beat you up or like kill you in the middle of the street for being gay. Like it's crazy. So I, this, uh, this story, I don't, this was sent to me. I don't know who sent me this. I didn't write down the name. I'm sorry. If I didn't write down your name, leave it in the comments. I make sure I shout you out in the next video. But this was a very, very good story. Cause it kind of shows how outside of uh, where we live, there are different rules of how people live. And sometimes you just got to be fortunate for what you got. Like it ain't perfect here, but it ain't the worst. Right? So I, sometimes it, I'm gonna be honest, man. This is this is wild. This is wild because I, I never I never thought in a million years that that the, a country could ban you from even saying the word. Like you can't even you can't even say homosexuality in Iraq. The media can't even say it. They gotta say sexual deviance. That's crazy. But yeah, that was a good story. I just I just did not want to watch the uh, the whole video, but appreciate that. This next story comes from NBC News, but it was sent to me by that boy Delvin. That boy Delvin. I think I spelled your name right. I put D E L three V's and the I and the N. Is that 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 boy Delvin? Shout out to you, bro. I ain't never seen you in the comments. Them other two people, I seen them leave comments, but that boy Devin, I ain't never seen you in the comments. Man, when you watching my videos, make sure y'all leave it. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and make sure y'all leave in comments because it really helps the channel. Uh, whatever y'all been doing recently has helped the channel too, or whatever YouTube algorithm been doing. I appreciate that YouTube, but it helps the channel like substantially. So this story from that boy Devin was about the NFL star Michael Orr. If you don't know who that is, he played for the Baltimore. Ravens for quite some time and he um 
he uh the 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 movie the blind side was written about him uh his life or whatever right right now it's a big controversy because they saying it's a lot i didn't watch this video but i heard a little bit about the story from joe budden podcast so i'm about to watch this video real quick so i can see talk about it and in a little more detail a little more information it was the feel good hit. Yo, shout out Lester Holt, too. Hey, hey if y'all at work, you can actually watch the lightning news the on, side, on your government computer, all based man. on a lie. Kaylee Hart. Imagine that. Stunning That's players. the only thing you can watch, though. You YouTube don't work. What, a room to yourself? I bet. The 2009 film The Blind Side captured hearts on the big screen, telling the story of future NFL star Michael Orr's adoption. Great movie, by the way. His family. But tonight, in a new lawsuit, Orr claims it was all a lie. The Tui family exploited him for their own benefit, and now he wants to sever all legal ties. Orr alleges the Tuis have falsely and publicly represented themselves as the adoptive parents of Michael, but never legally adopted him. Instead, Orr says, the couple tricked him in 2004, less than three months after he turned 18, into signing a document that made Sean... I ain't gonna lie, this shit kind of broke my heart, because I always thought this was a good-ass movie. And it was about like perseverance and coming from a, a shitty background to be somebody successful. I ain't never really liked the the whole savior, the, you know how the, the white savior type thing or whatever or that you got to be saved and shit by white people. No disrespect, love my white brothers and sisters, right? But I yeah, I, I never, I never, I never really bought into that. But um, I thought they, they what these people was doing was good for him. Because he was coming from a real bad situation. But now they're saying this shit is all lies. So, like, damn. And Leanne Tui, his conservators, giving them full legal control over any of his contracts. But no familiar That's crazy. relationship. It's a lie or says he discovered to his chagrin and embarrassment just six months ago. Well, a conservatorship is very different from an adoption. A conservatorship I ain't gonna lie. does not create a family relationship. It creates a legal responsibility. With that power, the petition alleges... How he just found out six months ago, though, the bro? ...the blind side in 2006. Orr claims the family made millions in royalties, while Orr says he received no payment whatsoever. The Tuies have not responded to comment, but in their 2010 book... He ain't made a dime? ...set of the money made from the movie, we divided it five ways. Sean Tui Jr. said in an interview today, the family was not surprised by the lawsuit. There were things back in... 2020, 2021, that they were like, you know, if you guys give me this much, then I won't go public with things. Michael Orr is now 37 years old and retired after playing eight seasons in the NFL. Yeah. He is asking the court that boy was actually to end the good too. and prohibit the Tuies from using his name and likeness and pay him his fair share. Give me my money, bro. Thanks for watching. Straight up. Hey, listen. So I, I hope this. I, I want to think this. I want to hope this story ain't true because I actually love that movie. That's actually a really good movie. But if it is, pay that man his money. If 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 y'all owe that man his money, pay that man his money, bruh. Because what kind of shit? Uh, all right. But first off, the whole movie was about him. How y'all gonna take all the money and don't give him no money? That's number one. Number two, I don't know if y'all watched this movie, The Blind Side, but they had Michael Oil looking stupid in there. They act like the man couldn't read and write like he was some old stupid... Uh, I, I don't know, like he was some slave or some shit. And number three, that look, that line in there about I never had one, and he, she was like, "What? A room to yourself?" And he was like, "A bed." I was like, "Man, come on, man, come on, bro. Like, like we got to stop it with this shit." I, it was a good movie, but if if any of this story is true, I, I I'm probably never gonna watch that movie again, cause that's insane. But if it ain't if it ain't pay the man his money, man. Thank you for sending me that too. I I actually heard a lot about this story. This is fucked up. Um, this this probably happens more than we like to believe, especially around professional athletes. Because when you sign in these contracts, you don't really know a lot about the legalities of money and royalties and stuff like that. But they made a whole movie about this man. I had the man looking crazy in the movie and didn't even pay the man. That's unbelievable to me. I I don't understand that. But hey. Shout out to uh, Michael Orr, man. He was a decent player. Um, the Tuies, man. If y'all did that, y'all wrong. Y'all wrong for that. Tuies, if y'all did that, allegedly, allegedly, y'all wrong. Cause I don't know. Look, I feel myself getting 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 some some new supporters on this this channel. 
And I don't know if I'm a, this this gonna age well in the future, and somebody see this and want to sue me because because I said something without putting allegedly behind it. All right, so don't sue me. I ain't got shit, so you ain't gonna get shit either. All right, the last story that we gonna we gonna discuss today, man, because I gotta go to work, and because this was kind of long, I'm I'm almost about thirty minutes in. Can't believe this phone didn't cut out. Shout out to iPhone 14 though. Look at this. All right, so this one comes from Georgia. Yeah, 13 News Now, and this was sent to me by, uh, I think this one was, I don't know who sent this either. Hey, listen, y'all gotta, when you put your, so when you send me a video, you don't have to send your link, but put your name in the thing, because sometimes when when I get it in my email and I have your name blocked, I don't know why y'all block y'all's names, unless you, unless you don't want me to say who sent the video. But this one was about uh, former President Donald Trump and the latest news on Trump's indictment in Georgia. I'm going to let this play real quick, probably a little bit of it, because I'm sure y'all heard about the situation, so I ain't got to go into detail, but here we go. We turn now to Georgia, where former President Donald Trump and 18 members of his team are accused of election 18. interference. ABC's Rena Roy has more. Former President Donald Trump now has 10 days to turn himself in in his fourth indictment, this time in Tony Georgia. TV, wow. The grand jury believes they were part of the illegal effort to overturn the results of Georgia's 2020 presidential election. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis charging Trump and 18 don't play. others, including some That's of the one who got young allies, with racketeering, calling them a criminal organization that knowingly and willfully joined a conspiracy to unlawfully change the outcome with a of the election in favor of Trump. Trump is charged with 13 counts in addition to racketeering. He's accused of soliciting a public officer to violate his oath, conspiring to commit forgery and conspiring to file false documents. This is a more dangerous indictment for Donald Trump in the sense Hey, he be looking like he don't give a shit either. Like when he walking down the street, he like, bro, I don't he don't care this nothing case, about these Rico's, that, bro. bro. The grand jury heard testimony from several witnesses. Georgia's former Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan says he was one of them. There's been a lot of misinformation for a number of years, and this is our opportunity to get the real story out. Uh, my hope is that Americans believe us. My hope is that Republicans believe us, uh, that this election was fair and legal. The probe launched two and a half years ago, sparked in part by this phone call to Georgia's Secretary of State when Trump appeared to pressure the top official to find the votes. Trump be laying on mugs like the mob. I only need 11,000 votes. The DA hoping to take this to trial within the Bruh. next six months as Trump's legal troubles continue mounting. He's facing roughly half a it's dozen like cases two. in four different states, all while running My boy got prison. cases. Yo, listen. Trump has denied all wrongdoing. His campaign team releasing a statement saying, in part, they are taking away Trump's First Amendment right to free speech. Rena Roy, ABC News, Atlanta. Shout out to ABC News. Yo, listen. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I mean, Trump ain't no saint, but he not about to do a day of jail time, guys. Like, let's be honest, man. I've been in the military so long that I kind of understand how politics affect everything and how everything, like it could be stuff that, that don't make sense, but people going to ride with their party. Like when you got pulled and you got money and you got that political backing, can't nothing stop you, man. This guy's not going to do a day of jail time. So I, while I appreciate the video, cause it gave me some content. And it's going to close out my this uh, episode of, of the Big Bad Podcast. Shout out to me and all my supporters, man. I appreciate you guys for real. Trump not about to do no time. And if he do, bro going to Club Med. Like, he's going to, like, the best prison ever. He ain't going to Rikers. He ain't Scarface. He don't have no tax evasion, even though I think he got a case for that shit, too. Trump not... Former President Donald Trump is not going to do a look of time. I don't know if this is going to age well because he might do 100 years, but I doubt it, right? But that is a good story. I, I'm just being honest, man. I And I honestly, I think he's going to run for president, and I think he's going to win again. Just because people have this innate nature to not want to follow political leaders, and Trump is anything but. So that that's why, that's why I think he got um, elected the first time. Because people just wanted something different than what it the status quo was or what it was. Uh, not the man now with this indict this indictment right now. This lady, uh, Fanny Fanny, I think her name is Fanny Willis. Fanny 
I don't want to call her Fannie Mae. That's somebody different. That's the college people, right? Fannie Willis. She don't play. That's the one. Remember, I did that video back in the day about Thug could use his uh, his his tools in different different. Young Thug can use his tools in different ways than crime. She's the one who indicted his whole team and gave them the racketeering charge. That's what Rico is racketeering. If y'all didn't know, it's a Rico indictment, uh, racketeering indictment. So, hey, listen. Yeah, I don't think Trump will do no time behind this. So that's my that's my piece on that. But hey, listen guys, this has been another episode of the Big Bad Podcast. This is episode four. I told myself if I can make it to 10, I'm all in. If y'all can get me to five, uh, 100, 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, I'm going to be ecstatic. If y'all get me to 10, man, I might do some wild shit for, my, for the 10 subscribers, 10,000 subscribers uh, appreciation video, man. Maybe I'll bring on, maybe I'll bring somebody out. Uh, find somebody who want to be on the channel and let them come talk to y'all. Maybe I'll call up one of the cool military leaders. Do y'all know anybody cool that y'all think I want to be on this channel that's like, for real, that ain't going to like shut my shit down? Then, then let me know. S tell them to send me an email. Uh, uh, tell me. I'll send them an email. But anyways, guys, appreciate you guys watching this video. Appreciate all y'all support for me. Appreciate y'all telling other people about the channel and hyping it up. Because who knows, man, maybe I could actually do this and spend some actual time doing YouTube. Who knows, man? We, we will see. All right? So, hey, i see you guys in the next episode. Peace.